welcome to the program. I'm Jessica Van Vonderen. The recent floods wreaked havoc, destroying property, businesses and crops. And they threatened lives. In the North Burnett, flood waters rose two metres above December 2010 levels. One woman there saw it from a unique perspective. She was swept away in the raging torrent. She told her story to our reporter, Cathy McLeish. Lucy Connolly went to bed in her home at Eidsvold in the North Burnet on the night of Saturday 26th of January with no thought of floods. Just after midnight that all changed. There was no warning that it was coming. It was, I was asleep. Uh, the toilet was making a gurgling noise and I jumped up to check what that was all about. I shone a torch out the window. Throughout the region, towns, farms and homes were being devastated by a record-breaking deluge. I was in total shock. I know the, the floods that had happened there before, there was nowhere near that amount of water. And to see just a sea out beside my house was just phenomenal. She called her parents for help. Triple O was notified of um, my crisis and um, we were informed that I was on my own. They weren't able to get to me at that, that time. I think it was because um, of the flood, no one could travel around and it was too dangerous for other people to get in there. Neighbour Rod Hartwig was the next on the list. Her father rang me up at about half past 12 and said, Lucy was still down in the house. Could I go down and, and get her out? And uh, I drove down in a ute. I packed a bag and uh, started to walk out when I could see the lights coming in. So it was just up to the, um, the stairs of the house. Um, I left there, um, went out through the shed and followed down the road. Uh, the water was only about up to my knees. I uh, got down to about here, the bend in the road, and um, I was hit by, I guess, a wall of water. According to Lucy, being swept into the torrent was like being hit by a truck. You're rushing. Uh, it, it's, it's all happens within seconds. You don't... It's too much to compute at, um, at that time. I didn't really have much time to think about it. I was too busy trying to grab onto something to um, stop being washed away. I um, felt myself go out over our boundary fence and then hit again on the... Um, on the main road and uh, tried to grab for a road sign but couldn't quite get to it and then was swept um, through a polonia tree farm and uh, tried to grab a few of those before I could find one that, um, that I could really cling to. For five hours Lucy clung to the tree. For a while she shared it with a snake. I tried to play in my head that it wasn't that long. I did a lot of praying, I thought about all the things I wanted to achieve sung a lot of songs, so I was probably lucky that no one heard me over the water. I felt a sense of calm. I tried really hard not to panic. I just kept my head and um, hope. Rod Hartwick was racing against the rising tide too. I realised I couldn't get there. Went home and got my four-wheel drive tractor, pretty big one. And when the water came up to the doors in the tractor, I. I couldn't see any guideposts, any trees. I realised I couldn't get there in that. So we went home and I hooked the boat up to the ute and all we could do then was wait for daylight. What was that like? It would be heart-wrenching, wouldn't it? <laughs> Knowing she was down there by herself and we couldn't get there was bloody awful. Um, come daylight, we, we put the boat in. During the night, an emergency beacon washed from the nearby weir and lodged in a tree near her. It was flashing. Then we got to the house and, like I said, when we sailed over, I just said to my son, I said, she's gone. And uh, guts just turned a big knot. And all I saw was a flashing light in the early morning light. We headed for that, thinking that might have been Lucy with a torch. My son heard somebody sing out. And he said, she's here. And we chuffed on through these trees for another 50, 60 yards. And 
kept stopping every now and again singing out and then even deaf bugger like me heard it. And uh, we finally, finally found it in the last branch of the tree. It was sticking up about, only about three foot out of the water. She was in the last branch. Poor little bugger. Been there from about one o'clock in the morning when she got swept away until after six when we found her. Uh, I understand she was quite happy when he saw us. <laughs> oh, I just thought, finally, I've hung on long enough. Yeah, it was just a relief. Yeah. What did they say or what did you say to them? Oh, they said they were bloody glad to see me and I said likewise. <laughs> I was quite good until I got back to the bank. It wasn't much bloody good then. That, uh, it was a hell of a relief. I think um, I'm pretty fortunate that I walked out towards the lights, uh, looking back at it now and having that the water was over both of the machinery sheds and the house. Uh, I am quite fortunate that I went for a tree. <laughs> this week, she met the governor. Are they calling me a hero? I don't think I'm really worthy of that. I'm probably more of a survivor. <laughs>